Hello everybody and welcome to the Nerdodrome where I'm recording a uh, quick uh, second preview of the add-ons that we are developing and using to make wires for empathy. Uh, this current add-on, uh, in fact two add-ons that I'm about to show, uh, have to do with working with the video sequence editor in Blender and dealing with proxies. And uh, so um, here's just a, an edit. Um, of a uh, secret second trailer that we're working on to make the movie and um, uh, we're using these add-ons to uh, make a workflow easier um, and so the two add-ons add this new um, item to the um, strips menu in the sequence editor um, and um, the important parts are the um, the four bottom ones that you're about to see here. This one here has specific to us. So, um, what is the problem, first of all? Let's start a new file. In fact, let's open this prepped empty file that I have set up for this purpose. And um, uh, let's load some stuff into that file. So, um, basically all our footage is located um, on a networked uh, server on a render farm and um, located in the renders folder we have different uh, footage folders and we have also um, AVI uh, previews um, in a different folder also on that server and we edit from that central location because it gives us the ability to um, to basically like work on different computers um, since we're kind of a distributed project um, but the thing is that um, working on the server does have some downsides, and I'm going to show them. So first of all, let's add um, uh, an image sequence here. So if I go to Add Image, and um, I've already kind of browsed to this network share before, and I'm going to load the EXRs, which are nice, big image files. And, you know, just to kind of complete the demo, I'm going to add a movie. And I'm going to add the movie file for the same shot in OpenGL. Um, so let's grab that, and that way there will be the minimal amount of spoilers um, here. And let's just move everything over. Oops, that's so slow. Um, see the problem? Everything is slow. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, now we have our so everything is kind of slow and um, if I hit Alt A um, you can see I'm getting uh, well it says I'm getting 33 but I'm not I'm getting around two frames per second okay so um, that's kind of a problem um, and so the um, solution is uh, well the reason for the problem is first of all EXRs are really big files and so it takes a lot of time to pull them off a disk. And in addition, we're having to pull them off a network. Um, so that adds network delays. And so that makes things slow. It's faster on the AVI. Even over the network, we're pretty fast here. We're at 24 frames per second. Um, however, if I was at home and using the internet to connect to the server, it would be terribly slow even for the AVI, um, especially reading it in the beginning when it first hits, hits the file. Um, so. The solution is to use proxies. And the way this works in Blender is you can um, open this uh, uh, properties panel in the sequence editor. And you can go down and enable proxy timecode. And then um, perhaps um, create a custom directory and select a directory in there and some some stuff. And um, notice that. Um, um, notice that you would have to do it, um, you know, for uh, for each one. And notice that the custom directory setting cannot be copied to other sequences. So you would have to click on each of them one by one and uh, select that directory. Um, so let's go back to the defaults now. So that's one of the problems, right? So it's good to be doing things on multiple strips at once if you have a big edit rather than doing it uh, one by one. So that's the first 
kind of uh, feature that we've got here. So I'm going to select these uh, two strips now instead of one. I'm going to go strips, and I'm going to do set proxy paths. And I'm, I'm just going to do 25. And for now, I'm not going to click Rebuild. Rebuild just automatically will create uh, proxies. I'm just going to set up the settings for now so it goes fast. Um, so now we can look at the settings. And we have that set up. And you'll notice that it's, it's created a new folder um, where it's put um, all these files. And I'm going to show you where that folder lives. So here's the server. And here's actually uh, where I'm working in this temporary delete folder. Um, and yes. Oh, right. Because I haven't created anything yet, it hasn't actually created the folder. So uh, there will be a folder here in this temporary location because, uh, as you can see in the path, it's using relative paths, so it's going to put it in the same path as the blend file. So the next step is actually building the proxies. So I'm going to just select these two. I'm going to click uh, Make Timed Proxies. And now you'll see it's created the tproxy folder, and it's building the proxies inside of them. It takes a little bit to build the proxies, especially for the EXR frames. So if you look at the ABI, that's probably already built. and the EXRs are chugging away, getting built here in the proxy folder. Now, the advantage of using this custom folder is that it's not on the network. It's local to the file that I'm working on. So it's fast. And it can also be copied along with the file to another computer, say a laptop. So I can work offline and not be connected to the server. And we're just going to wait a little bit, and it's going to be done building the proxies. Now it's done. So now I can click here. And um, let's just uh, make this a little bit more compact and go to View Settings and change this to Proxy Size. And now um, I have the nice proxy speed that Blender offers 24 frames per second on both these uh, files which is kind of nice. So things, um, things could be ideal here, um, but there are a couple of small uh, caveats. Uh, one is that uh, since I'm working on a large project and I typically have tons of files in my edit, um, uh, and these files are constantly being re-rendered or reanimated and changed, and so at any moment, uh, one or more of these proxies could go stale. And um, I would need to re, uh, re proxify it so that it now reflects the new state of the shot. Um, Blender doesn't have a built in way of detecting that this stuff has changed. And so uh, this feature adds a timestamp when it does the proxying and it compares. Um, it compares the uh, current time to the one in the timestamp. And so if you go look at this uh, Make Timed Proxies, if I click on this, notice it didn't actually rebuild uh, anything new. Uh, the reason for that is that the timestamps for the files that I just created are matching uh, the ones that are on disk. And therefore, there is no need for it to rebuild the proxies. Where if I click on this and go to the original rebuild proxy and timecode index, it's going to go into this rebuilding proxies business all over again. Um, and now I don't have to deal with that. I, it only will do it if one of them has changed. So that's kind of a uh, useful feature um, that uh, this uh, add-on uh, provides. And then the other. Um, kind of uh, funky uh, funky items on the menu that would be relevant to people are this online and offline thing. And it's actually quite simple. Um, it's a little bit of a hack, actually, even. Um, if you look at a strip, um, you've got a strip input, which points to the original path. And you've got the proxy um, custom directory path. And um, I found. Uh, that if you are disconnected from the network so that this path uh, no longer points uh, to a valid file, 
Even if you're looking at the proxies, you will get a black image here in the editor. And so what this uh, s offline proxy strips does, if I click on it, you'll notice it changes the strip path uh, to the same path as the proxy path. And it saved the uh, real path internally in the file. And so now, even if I were disconnected from the network, I would still have a, a valid edit to work with. And once I reconnect to the network, let's say I'm working on a laptop in a coffee shop, and then I go back to the studio and I plug it in, I can go here and I can online it again, and I'm back into network mode where I'm referencing the real strip and I can render out my edit. That means that I'm not dependent on network connectivity uh, to do my editing. So that is uh, the purpose of these uh, four buttons that you see here. The final one is just creating the sim links um, to the network folder. Uh, usually we don't access the network files directly. We access them from a sim link. And this is just a handy dandy thing that creates sim links and only works on Linux. So, And um, probably should be removed um, eventually uh, from the add-on before I put it online. Um, <laughs> So let, let's assume that the published version won't actually have this particular menu item because it shouldn't really refer to our own servers in the add-on. So that is the, um, that is the extent of the proxy workflow add-on. It's quite simple. And um, the next one I'm going to show is the transparent proxies. So um, uh, let's install the add-on first. So I'm going to see if it's there there uh, but it doesn't seem to have a menu item um, maybe maybe I'll, I'll access it from the spacebar menu so I'm going to add an image and I'm going to add one from the same folder right here and we'll do transparent proxies now the first thing is that this image has alpha as you can see and for it to work in the sequence editor um, unfortunately, we have to um, change the alpha blending mode to alpha over. By default, it is not, um, so you don't get the alpha. And now we have the nice alpha. And now let's say that I wanted to make a proxy of this strip. So I'm going to go and set the proxy paths. And this time, I'm going to let it rebuild. And it's going to make a proxy real fast. And you'll notice that that proxy is uh, lacking in transparency. Um, so we have a problem here if we're trying to do the edit. And then if I make a proxy with alpha, um, this should have been in the menu, but it is not. Um, whoops. Um, click that, and then refresh the sequencer. Now we get the alpha back in the proxy. Um, and this is also a hack, very much so. Um, I'll show you the uh, code so you can kind of uh, appreciate how hackish it is. It's actually calling image magic from the command line, and it's making a targa file and then renaming it to a JPEG. So it basically just lies to Blender about what kind of files it's using. The nice thing about lying is that it allows Blender's built-in proxy system to handle this rather than doing it in a separate way. And so that's the extent of our uh, add-ons for this week. And um, if you stay tuned, I'm going to publish another video that will be a little bonus round for the week. So uh, that'll be related to rigging and animation. And I hope you come watch it. So thanks for watching, and uh, see you all later.